Hello, friends. Welcome to worship this third Sunday of Eastertide. And if I'm counting correctly, maybe the sixth or seventh Sunday, depending on how you've marked the time of Corona Tide. Um, I am glad that we can be together in this way. Welcome to the Peace Lutheran Church family, to the Lord of Life Lutheran Church family, and to everyone who's joining us from wherever you are. It is a remarkable gift of God that we can be together in this way from across so many places. To worship today, you can find the worship resources, our, our bulletin at peaceaustin.org to pull up on a screen or download and print. And also during worship, we'll be giving thanks for the gift of baptism. And I invite you as you prepare for worship in the midst of your everyday space to um, gather things that might help you to focus on the sacred that enters our ordinary time, um, a candle, a flower, a symbol of faith, and in particular, maybe a bowl of water, including if you wish, um, a drinking vessel, a small bowl, um, or maybe something that would, you would use to water a plant. Because as we give thanks for the gift of baptism today, we remember all those ways that God's life-giving water nourishes us and the world. And if you wish to echo the actions you see happening during that liturgy of thanksgiving, um, you're very much invited to do that. So, believe all is ready and God is with us. So let us prepare our hearts for worship as we hear the prelude. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah!
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read Psalm 116. You are invited to join in or just listen along. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Peter. 
if, if you invoke as father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have been purified, your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now invite the children to listen along for the children's sermon. Hello, kids. You might be wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses. Well, this morning it was really bright outside and I went inside after being out in the bright sunshine and I couldn't see anything. It was really dark. So I decided to put some sunglasses on so that it would protect my eyes. Well, that reminded me a little bit of the story that we're gonna talk about today in the gospel. There were a couple of disciples who were walking down a road and they were in some sad times. You know, they'd been They'd just seen that Christ was crucified and they were very sad about that. And they were talking about it and walking along the road and they came upon a man and the man asked them, why are you so sad? And they explained what happened. And the man said, you know, that's the way things were supposed to be. Let me explain some things to you about scripture. So they, they listened to the man for a while and, and they commiserated with him and then invited him to have dinner. All the while they didn't recognize who this man was. So when they got to dinner and they sat down, they broke bread and it was blessed. And all of a sudden they realized that the person they were sitting with was Jesus. And he was there as bright as day. And Jesus broke bread with them. And then all of a sudden he vanished and he wasn't there anymore. So they were amazed that they had this uh, experience of having Jesus come with them and bringing them out of darkness and into the light. And so, uh, I think we're in some dark times right now. You know, maybe we're sad because we can't go to school or we can't see our friends, but we know we have the brightness of Jesus with us. So feel free to wear your shades. Somebody once said in the 80s, future's so bright, you got to wear your shades. And the future is bright as long as Jesus is with us. So let's say a quick prayer to thank God. God, thank you for sending us Jesus, the brightness into our lives. Help us remember that even when he's not with us, uh, he is there to keep us safe, happy, and, and in the bright love of, from God. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going down to a village, going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. 
Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, when it comes to Christ visiting his friends after the resurrection, I have to say, my favorite stories are the ones that involve food. Jesus broiling fish on the beach, telling Peter and Thomas and Nathaniel and James and John to come have breakfast. The time Jesus has them bring him a bite of fish so he can eat it and prove to them that he isn't a ghost. And today, Jesus revealing himself in the breaking of the bread for the ones who were sad and confused and walking away from the future that they had hoped was true. There are so many delicious details in today's story. We could talk about so many things. It's like a five course meal, this text. And I'll use that opportunity as a shameless plug that if you want to discuss this text more, you can join our lectionary and life group at five o'clock on Sunday nights, including this week, to talk about what we've read in scripture and what's happening in our lives. The link to that meeting is in Peace's weekly email, and I will be happy to share it with you if you would like to join us. All are welcome. First, of the details of this story that I love. There's the disciples not recognizing Jesus where they don't expect him to be, which if we're honest, most of us can probably understand, or at least I hope that you can understand it the way I do. You don't have to throw me off, you do much to throw me off of my recognizing people game. Just take someone that I know and put them in a different place than I'm used to seeing them and poof, instant mystery person with maybe just like a hint of anxious recognition that I don't trust quite enough to mention. Oh my goodness, dog, is there someone you don't recognize? Or do you just think so? No, it's fine, stop, stop, stop. It reminds me of this Calvin and Hobbes cartoon where Calvin is flabbergasted to see his school teacher, Mrs. Wormwood, uh, in the grocery store on summer vacation. Uh, his mom kind of looks at him. She's like, well, Calvin, she has to buy groceries too. What do you think she does all summer? And Calvin is just sort of aghast. He says, I don't know. I guess I just thought that she slept in a coffin in the closet behind her desk all summer. Another savory little detail. Uh, Jesus asking them, what things? What, have, what things have been happening? And they say the things, the things about Jesus. 
incredulous that he wouldn't know. I mean, can you imagine right now someone walking up to you in the HEB parking lot, all of a sudden getting closer than six feet and, and saying, why is everyone wearing masks? I mean, who doesn't know that the world is upside down and inside out? How could you possibly miss it? I wish I could turn on the radio and for 30 seconds not hear the words coronavirus, right? Another detail that I love was pointed out to me this year by the uh, host of one of the podcasts I listened to. He reminds us that in Luke's gospel, remember the story begins in a world that doesn't have room for God. There is no room in the inn. But here now in the gospel's final chapter, even though the world is still heavy, with confusion and grief, even though the world still doesn't always recognize God or know to look for God where they don't expect God to be, this story, case in point, even though we are not yet what we are becoming and what we are meant to be, the world has changed because before there wasn't room for God. But now Jesus is invited as a stranger into the home where these two disciples are staying for the night. And there is no question. There is room. The world really has changed, even though it is also still becoming. The final detail that I will relish before making hopefully a few more cohesive points about this moment in the gospel text is actually one that was pointed out uh, to me during uh, Peace Lutheran's midweek Lenten worship services last year when we journeyed with this story week after week and listened again and again to what it had for us. And I'm sorry that I don't remember who it was, but someone pointed out at one point how the disciples were so eager to ask Jesus to stay with them because the day was almost over, night was falling. And I love that Luke also just sort of basically tells us that Jesus is like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. Like he's not really serious, but he's sort of pretending that he's not going to stay. But they wanted more time with him. And surely also they wanted him to come in to safety because traveling alone was dangerous enough, more or less traveling alone and at night. And given that he already seemed to have very little idea what was going on, maybe they were just a little bit worried that he might get himself into trouble. But then after dinner reveals his identity and he somehow vanishes, they rush out into that same dangerous night to go and tell about it. Which brings me to the first of two broader themes that feel important for our world today. The first is that when they recognize Jesus at the table, they see that the world has been turned upside down and the rules have changed. And all of a sudden, something is more important than not going out at nighttime. They have to go and tell what they have seen. Now, at this moment, I do not want to advocate for anyone rushing out into unsafe places in the name of the gospel. There is more than enough of that going around. I want you to stay as safe as you possibly can. And I also still think there is a connection between that choice to do the counterintuitive thing and this time of corona tide. You see, sometimes the world turns so upside down that we find ourselves doing things that we never would have thought to do before. And the reason for that, I think, is this. We ground ourselves in why, not how. Or at least we probably should. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. We are a people who gathers together in community to worship in person, to share a sacred meal together, to be truly together because we have learned that God meets us there and that God reorients our whole inner universe towards life and love for ourselves and for each other. The love 
is the why. And our pattern for worship that has been carried through so many thousands of years, through, through so many changes and chances of life, is how. Is how we do that. God reorients us towards love through worship and the sacraments. Except, right now, if we gathered that way, if we shared that meal, people could die literally die. So we change the how to serve the why. Now, we love one another and the world by staying apart as best we can and by protecting one another when we have to come closer. And it may seem upside down and inside out, but so did running out into the night to go back to Jerusalem, the place that had become the epicenter of fear and death, but had all of a sudden transformed into the path to love and life and connection and the work of the kingdom of God. If you keep track of your why, then you'll be able more readily to shift the how, even when it was something you couldn't have imagined doing before. The second theme that I want to name also connects to our time and is really about the resurrection appearances of Jesus in general and how Jesus brings us with him into the essential work of resurrection. We hear a lot about essential work right now, right? We are calling people heroes who we might never have thought to call heroes before, though maybe we should have done. But a friend of mine, Elizabeth, made what I think was a really important point on Facebook the other day, where all the really important points are made and all the hottest takes are taken. And I'll paraphrase what she said. She said that as a society, we need to work harder to differentiate between the people who we elevate as heroes and the people who we offer up as sacrifices. If someone is on the front lines right now, caring for the sick, helping make sure people are fed and safe and that the world is as clean as it can be and that everything continues that must to allow people to live, even when it means risking their own lives, if they are doing that and they have appropriate protection, the best that we can offer them, and appropriate compensation, they are paid well to do that work, then we can call them heroes. And so we should. If those same people are doing that work and are not protected as best we can or paid, if they are doing that work because if they refuse it, they don't feel like they will be safe for fear of losing income or security of other kinds, then we should probably call them sacrifices. They may be saving us. They are, but if they aren't able to choose it, then we should not use their heroism to distract from our inhumanity. But what on earth does this have to do with disciples walking away from Jerusalem that day or Jesus appearing to his friends so many times after he rose from the dead? Very good question. As I see it, God is building a world where we are invited into the work of the kingdom. And that work is almost always going to be dangerous to some degree or another, no doubt. Building the kingdom has never been safe or easy, but God will not send us into that work ill-equipped. And the kingdom of God is not built through conscription. You will never be drafted into this labor. Jesus will walk alongside you, come and visit you in your places of fear, and show himself to you again and again and reveal his vision for a world restored and redeemed. And God will invite you and will invite all of us into the work of building it. But you will always be allowed to choose. You can be a hero for the kingdom 
and it will probably come at a cost if you choose that work. But you are invited, as well you should be, because you are a child of God, and you can do more than you know to change and save this world in the name of Christ who is risen. You can be a hero, but God will not make of you a sacrifice. Even Jesus' sacrifice was a choice. And we can all work to build a world that works that way for everyone. And I believe Jesus is inviting us to remember also, if that idea is daunting, or this moment is frightening. If you need to ask Jesus what it looks like to do the work you are called to do, to be brave, to find the new how, to live out your why, I would suggest trying talking to him over lunch. He loves to show up where there's food and it doesn't have to be fancy. I know food is complicated right now, we are missing the sacred meal that is at the heart of our community. You may be having trouble getting what you need, or maybe you're baking up a storm right now. But no matter how meager or extravagant, or anxious or lonely or messy or silly or loving, your table is today. You can talk to Jesus there. It is the altar of Christ's presence now. Actually, it always was. May the risen Christ be revealed to you at your table. And may you recognize him in the strange landscape of this world that we live in right now. May you be filled with courage to keep living your why, even when the how has changed. May we give thanks for the heroes in our world today and be called to protect those who are being made sacrifices. May God's kingdom come where no one is sacrificed because every child of God is precious. May you find peace and joy and comfort and hope this week. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Dear friends, we are gathered, bordered by uncertainty and death, awaiting new life. In the waters of baptism, we join Christ in death. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn. Today, we affirm our faith in unsettled times. We claim life in the face of death. We take hold of the promises of baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you make us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. The service continues with the affirmation of faith. With the whole church, we proclaim our resurrection faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy God, source of living water, all life flows out from you. In times of uncertainty, for the future unknown, we cling to the promise that you are always with us. In the days of chaos, your voice moved over the waters and life sprang forth. In the days of the flood, you kept Noah and his family safe from harm. In the days of fleeing Egypt, you separated the sea so your people could pass. In the days of wandering in the wilderness, you made water flow from a rock. Holy God, great giver of the gift of water, all life flows out from you. Through the baptism of Jesus, all water is made holy. Not just the water in a baptismal font or a beautiful waterfall, not just the water of the Jordan River so far away, but all water that is water. The water we drink. the water we bathe in and use to wash our hands so many times each day. The water that nourishes the land.
Holy God, source of living water, all life flows out from you. We praise you for the gift of baptism that binds us to one another and to you. As we touch this precious holy water, remind us of who we are, your beloved children. Help us see each person as a member of your body. Ease our anxieties and strengthen our resolve to care for each other. Deepen our faith. Holy God, great giver of the gift of water, all life flows from you. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems that we continue to perpetuate, 
forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit, especially those we name before you now. Peggy Adams, the family of Gary Bemis, Vince Crawley, Charles Fox, Roger Kelm, and those we name aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of the church, for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, Confirmation, and membership. For those who participate in Sunday School and adult education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As you reflect on the ways you can share your peace in this world in this strange time, I invite you to also reflect on the gifts which God has entrusted to you to care for this world and to do the work of building the kingdom if you choose to answer that call. You are, of course, very welcome and invited to offer financial offerings to your congregation, Peace and Lord of Life have ways of doing that on their website. And any other place you see that you have a need that you might be called to meet in this time. And pray that you feel that you have the support you need, as you can also extend love and support to others. We reflect on the offering of our lives as we hear the offering of music given to God today. Oh, 
spirit's Lord, to be made whole, let it work Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Make our lives and our love overflow into this world for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.